Now let us see how the energy is liberated or released from glucose. So that is the different uh, stages of cellular respiration. So basically the glucose is supplied to the cells. In the cell, in the cytoplasm, that is the location at which the primary part of this reaction takes place. So in the cytoplasm of this cell, the glucose is converted to pyruvate or pyruvic acid. So glucose is a 6 carbon compound which is converted to 2 pyruvate of 3 carbon each. A 6 carbon compound a glucose is converted to 2 pyruvic acid or 2 pyruvate of 3 carbon each. So this is called as glycolysis. glycolysis. So glycolysis means breakdown of glucose into two molecules of pyruvic acid which takes place in the cytoplasm. So this is common for any kind of respiration even in the aerobic organisms or anaerobic organisms. That means some organisms they carry out respiration without the presence of oxygen. Those are anaerobic organisms like bacteria, yeast and other organisms they carry out respiration in presence of oxygen like human beings. We carry out the respiration in our cells the cellular respiration is carried out in presence of oxygen. So we are aerobic organisms but whereas bacteria and yeast they carry out the cellular respiration in absence of oxygen those are anaerobic organisms. So whether it is anaerobic respiration or aerobic respiration the first part of the respiration conversion of glucose to pyruvate is carried out in the cytoplasm of the cell and in absence of oxygen oxygen is not required for this step both for aerobic organisms as well as anaerobic organisms this conversion is common. What is that? Glucose is converted to pyruvate. One molecule of 6 carbon glucose is converted to two molecules of 3 carbon pyruvic acid. Now let us see what happens to this pyruvate in case of yeast in case of aerobic organisms. In case of aerobic organisms like human beings this pyruvic acid is converted to carbon dioxide, water and energy. So the molecule is completely utilized and from that simple substances like carbon dioxide and water are released and the total energy present in the pyruvate is utilized, released out, taken out in which form the energy will be released in the form of a molecule called ATP, adenosine triphosphate. So in this process in, anaer in aerobic respiration that is in presence of oxygen the pyruvic acid is completely released from energy. So the energy is completely taken out of this pyruvic acid and it is converted to carbon dioxide water and so the energy is derived out of this. So there are no big byproducts, there are no big biomolecules as products in this reaction. Only the simple substances like carbon dioxide and water are released out of it. So in case of, in case of absence of oxygen like bacteria or yeast, if we take yeast in case of yeast, what happens to this pyruvic acid? If the organism want to get complete energy from the pyruvate, whatever the energy is stored in the pyruvate, how many ATP are there in that pyruvate, if, we, if the organism wanted to take the whole energy, it needs oxygen. But here in case of yeast, no oxygen, absence of oxygen. In these cases, what happens? The respiration continues, which is called as fermentation. Here we are calling this process as fermentation, which happens in absence of oxygen. What happens is that ethanol and carbon dioxide are released. So pyruvic acid is converted to ethanol and carbon dioxide and energy. But the energy is less compared to aerobic respiration. In case of aerobic respiration, the energy present in the pyruvate is completely taken out. But whereas completely released here, but it is not completely released, only a part of the energy is released and uh, some energy is still stored in the ethanol. But the organism completely utilizes, it cannot completely utilize the pyruvate. So in anaerobic respiration, these organisms get less energy out of the glucose when compared to aerobic organisms. In anaerobic organisms, along with the energy, some other material is also prepared, synthesized. 
So these are the differences between anaerobic respiration and aerobic respiration. So the organisms which can breathe and take oxygen in their bodies aerobic respiration takes place. In our bodies also aerobic respiration takes place. But sometimes in some cases even in our bodies on a temporary basis anaerobic respiration takes place in certain situations. See you are holding your breath while doing some exercise or jogging or running. So by holding your breath you are running. So you are not breathing, you are not supplying oxygen to your body and you are running. In such cases there is no oxygen to the cells, you are not breathing. You held up your breath for some time. So the cells are deprived of oxygen, what do they do? So there the energy is required as you are running means lot of energy is required. So the glucose is converted to pyruvic acid, the first step doesn't require oxygen anyway. So the glucose is converted to pyruvic acid, that's fine. But the pyruvic acid has to give out energy, but there is no supply of oxygen in your muscles. In such cases, so the pyruvic acid is converted to lactic acid and energy. The pyruvic acid is converted to lactic acid and energy. Here also, the energy is not completely derived from the glucose because oxygen is not there. Only some energy. So you may get some energy from the glucose, not as you get in the uh, aerobic respiration. If the oxygen is present, you will get the complete energy from the glucose. Oxygen is absent, you will get lactic acid and energy. So this uh, lactic acid gets accumulated in your muscles. So as you are running up, in your muscles this anaerobic respiration takes place when you hold your breath, when you stop the supply of oxygen temporarily, then lactic acid builds up in your muscles and it may lead to muscle cramps. Suddenly you are, if you are doing a vigorous exercise, giving some heavy work to your muscles, if the oxygen is not sufficient, it may lead to muscle cramps. You may feel that pain in your muscles because due to the accumulation of lactic acid. But this is a temporary one. Soon you release your breath, soon you take the oxygen slowly, this lactic acid is again converted to pyruvic acid and it goes on as usual in the reactions. So this is the way how the glucose is converted to energy in different different situations and in different cases like anaerobic respiration and aerobic respiration. So whatever may be the respiration finally, what is the needed thing here energy, energy, energy. In anaerobic respiration less energy plus some other product like ethanol. In aerobic respiration energy is released in large quantity along with that some carbon dioxide and water are released. Here all the cases we see that the energy is released in which form the energy is released here. In which forms the cells can readily use the energy that is the ATP. So in this respiration energy is finally released in the form of ATP. So ATP are called as cell currency. That means for various activities of this cell ATP are required. Of course you may be say just for an example you may be holding a check which is worth of some 10,000 or 20,000. You may be holding a gold bar which is of worth 50,000 or 1 lakh. But you cannot use that gold bar or check to buy some provisions in a shop. You need to carry some cash with you. So in the same way here the energy is packed in this glucose and pyruvate. Finally for the cells the energy is required in the form of ATP. So ATP is called a cell currency because for all activities of this cell ATP are required. So energy is finally released in the form of ATP. So we have seen how the energy is released from the molecules like glucose in the process of cellular respiration. So energy is released in the form of a molecule called as ATP. So what is this ATP adenosine triphosphate? So its name itself indicates that there are three phosphates in this adenosine say this is adenosine, so it has got three phosphates, some three phosphates here. So adenosine triphosphate. So this is the molecule which has got the energy packed in it. In endothermic reactions, that means the reactions which absorb the heat, which absorb the energy are called endothermic reactions. So in endothermic reactions, the energy is absorbed by splitting this ATP into ADP 
adenosine diphosphate plus inorganic phosphate. So ATP is broken down to ADP and inorganic phosphate. So when this breaking takes place, energy is liberated and used by that reaction. So in this way, the ATP, the energy currency molecules of ATP are utilized inside the cells. When the terminal phosphate of an adenosine triphosphate is split by water molecule, we get 30.5 kilojoules per mole of energy. So this much of energy is released. This ADP, again, they get the another phosphate bond and they become ATP. So this takes place during the cellular respiration. Again, this ADP are converted to ATP. So ATP is an energy packet molecule. Once the energy is taken out, it becomes adenosine diphosphate. So it is stored in that last terminal phosphate, third phosphate of this ATP. So this is how energy is supplied. This energy is used for various chemical reactions, just simply like how a battery or a cell is used to uh, run different kind of things. The chemical energy in the battery is used as a light energy, sound energy, mechanical energy. So we can use it in different forms. In the same way, the energy present in the ATP is utilized for various reactions inside the cells. So we have seen that respiration, the cellular respiration in which energy is released from the molecules like glucose. But here, if you see the aerobic respiration, so the aerobic respiration requires oxygen, takes place only in presence of oxygen. How the aerobic organisms get the oxygen? Where is it present? Oxygen is present in the air as well as in the water. The organisms that live on land, they get the oxygen from the air. Air is around us. Air contains oxygen. So how, how do organisms obtain this oxygen? If you see plants, plants, they have special pores called as stomata, stomata through which the oxygen can be taken in. Of course, the plant produces oxygen and releases out. But sometimes when the photosynthesis is not done, the plant may take oxygen from outside even that happens through the stomata. In this way, the oxygen is supplied to the bodies of plants. Whereas if you see the microorganisms, unicellular organisms, how do they get? They get the oxygen by simple diffusion. Their bodies are very simple and the oxygen present in the atmosphere can easily diffuse into their bodies. But if you see the multicellular organisms, they have well-developed structures to absorb the oxygen from the air. We see a gradual evol evolution, development of respiratory structures from different organisms, from smaller organisms to higher organisms. If you see in that insects, they have some air spaces in their bodies, air tubes, through which they respire, tracheal respiration. So whereas uh, if you see the frogs and all, they absorb the oxygen through their moist skin and even they have lung-like structures to breathe in. And if you see that, uh, the other animals like uh, uh, lizards or snakes, reptiles, they have respiratory structures, lungs. So they breathe through that. If you see the higher animals, cats, dogs, humans, they have well-developed lungs to absorb the oxygen from the air. If you see the animals that are living in water, aquatic organisms, they have to absorb the oxygen from the water. The availability of the oxygen is different in different types of water bodies. It depends upon the purity of the water. Polluted water bodies contain very less amount of oxygen. So the percentage of oxygen is not stable in water. It is a problem to the aquatic organisms. So aquatic organisms like fishes, they will take the water into their mouth and from the mouth, it is pushed into their foral cavity or uh, buccal cavity. From there, it is pushed into the pharynx where the gills are arranged. So this water is pushed onto the gills and the gills are made wet. So the gills, they have blood vessels. When this water comes in contact with the blood vessels, the oxygen is diffused into their blood. So from there it is carried to the body. So this is a bit quite complex process that is observed in the fishes. And I already told you that the percentage of oxygen is different in different water bodies. If the percentage of oxygen is less, 
the fish has to drink the water take the water into its mouth continuously and push the water onto its gills so by that the gills are bathed with water from there the oxygen is absorbed by diffusion and the remaining water is pushed out through the gill lids that is called as operculum see if you see a fish from its top position top view we see like this so the water enters into the mouth of the fish the fish it has got the gills here so whatever the water is taken into its mouth the fish opens its mouth and takes the water then it raises its lower cavity of the mouth it raises its lower floor of the mouth so by that the pressure pushes the water on to the gills and the water comes out as the water is passing over the gills from the gills the whatever the blood vessels are present in the gills absorb the oxygen from this water and this oxygen is supplied to the body parts this is in case of fish different aquatic organisms have different arrangements to absorb the oxygen from the water terrestrial animals they have plenty of oxygen 21% of oxygen in the atmosphere and they have developed special structures to absorb the oxygen even in the terrestrial organisms like human beings we have to take the air in to special structure where the absorption diffusion of oxygen takes place we need lot of oxygen so definitely we need lot of surface for the process of diffusion see we cannot take the oxygen through our skin our skin has large surface it is exposed to the air but from the air our skin cannot take any oxygen the air has to go into some structure in which the diffusion of gases takes place so this structure is well protected inside the body that is the lungs if we observe the human respiratory system so it has got different parts let us see how the oxygen is diffused here and how the oxygen enters the oxygen mixed with up air that means the air which contains oxygen oxygenated air it enters our body through the nostrils we have a pair of nostrils the air passes through these nostrils inside the nostril we have some hairs to filter the dust and insects there we have some mucus which absorb the dust and which moist the air before enters into the lungs so by that the lungs are not collapsed so the air enters into this nasal cavity which is lined with mucus the air is humidified here the humidified air is passed through this special structure called as wind pipe this is the wind pipe or trachea we have a wind pipe the wind pipe begins with a special structure called as larynx voice box that means which enable us to produce the sounds while exhalation of the air so the air passes through this wind pipe and it divides into two branches called as bronchi so these bronchi are divided into some other branches finer branches bronchioles and finally they end up with small bubble like structures tiny tiny grape sized bubble like structures these are alveoli so alveoli are the units of lungs the structural and functional unit of lung is alveoli every alveoli if this is the alveoli every alveoli is richly supplied with blood vessels blood vessels are there in this alveoli when we inhale the air which contains oxygen when the air enters into this alveoli so here in the alveoli the diffusion of gases takes place between the blood and alveoli so the alveoli are like small small bubbles folded because large amount of area is kept in small place so more surface in less space so as the surface is more there is a chance for more diffusion of gas so more amount of gas oxygen is diffused into the blood so this oxygen is carried to different body parts so humans have this kind of well developed structures for the diffusion of oxygen that is for the collection of oxygen as well as for the release of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere